manufacturing, technology, hot topics, and a little bit of tomfoolery. This is the MTD Podcast. Welcome to today's MTD Podcast. A little bit different today. We're talking about Brexit and actually the fact that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I'm I thought it was all Brexit's all going to be doom and gloom, isn't it? Absolutely not, Colin. No. What do you think that? Who have you been well, listening to? Well... You know my opinion on politicians and watching Question Time. I, I've got a direct line to Curry's because every time Question Time or anything like that on TV, I stick a brick through the screen. It's cost me a fortune, but I hate him. <laughs> I cannot tell the truth. Don't get me going on a rant. Anyway, back to you, Paul. So that's Colin's opinion on it. But we're uh, joined. Uh, we have a guest with us today, uh, Sanjay. Um, Sanjay, you're the manager. Well, I'll tell you what. You tell us a little bit about your company because I know this is going to be an interesting insight for engineers as to uh, what you do and how you may be able to help. Thank you, Paul. Yes. Um, so, yep, as Paul says, my name is Sanjay Vallab. I am Managing Director and Principal of Vallab Associates Limited. And my first question, how much did you spend with the marketing team to come up with that name? Well, <laughs> hundreds of thousands, <laughs> Colin, as, you, as you can imagine. And I went back to the first one I put on the list. Okay, so Vallab Associates it is in. Uh, uh, sorry it does, about Sanjay, get on with it. It does what it says on the tin, <laughs> Colin. So, yes, yeah, I've, I've uh, recently incorporated and, you know, off the back of 15 years worth of commercial and corporate banking experience, I thought I'd come out into the real world, really. When you say corporate banking experience, it's specialising in trade, international finance side. That's right. So I, I've been supporting businesses for a number of years with their international requirements, but that be helping them export, ensuring that they're getting paid, putting in, you know, solutions to ensure they can fund those um, contracts, really. And what sort of businesses would they would they be, so size-wise, ranging? Yeah, so there's, you know, they're the range in, 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 you know, a good degree of sizes. So I've dealt with your smaller, sort of, you know, one-man band, you know, potentially operating out of their garage, and, and, <coughs> so, and that's more around exploring the opportunities of export and, and looking at an international process of their business, right up to your top-level OEMs and Tier 1 suppliers into them. So, um, so this for you. So f for you at the moment, this is quite a, um, a a poignant time, isn't it? Because there's lots going on and um, lots of interest. I assume in what you actually do and what you can offer. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of uncertainty in the market, and as you guys have said, no, you know, not, is it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Deal, no deal. I'll tell you what, I flipping ate Noel Edmonds. Absolutely. So uh, It's all about the chase now, Colin. Come on, get with it. So he's been doing that for years. He's never caught <laughs> her either. Yeah, they've all yeah. run faster than me, mate, I'll tell you. So at the moment, it's pretty uncomplicated to trade, isn't it, with Europe, as we all know. Um, but things may change. Absolutely. You know, wh whether there'll be a, a, a full deal, a Norwegian project, a, a, a Swiss project... We don't know that. And I, you know, unfortunately, I don't think the politicians know that at this stage. Um, but what we do know, things will change. And we hear these these terms as well about Norway plus, Norway plus, plus, Norway plus, 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 plus. What, 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 what are they? Do you, can you give us any detail about what those kind of trade arrangements are? So different c countries that operate outside of the EU will have different arrangements. And that comes down to how well they can negotiate their deal and what they have. So the Swiss, I believe, for a long time didn't have a deal. So they had to come up with the, the Switzerland deal. And then when Norway opted out of the process, they came up with their own project in terms Nor of how Norway they would project. They use Indeed. the same marketing team to name that stuff as your company. But well, they're in good hands then. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, do, do you know what the, uh, the Norway deal is? Do you know any details about what the differences in trade there is there from what the world... Uh, the WTO rules are or the current rules with the EU? So at a high level, they, they they have specific arrangements to be able to trade with the EU. Now, that comes, you know, as a part of a negotiation. So they allow a certain element of free movement of people within within their borders and, and really to try and adopt some of the some, some of the better processes that the EU have, but still remain in control of, you know, potentially, the, you know, their policy making um, and, 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 and some of the more, in you know, um, pertinent facts that, that you would want running a country really i suppose ultimately though engineers are sitting there at the moment thinking right i'm exporting to europe come march the 30th it's going to grind to halt it's going to be a nightmare can you give me some confidence sanjay because we're all going to blame you if, if it goes wrong you wouldn't be the first colin okay so yeah I mean, there is going to be some disturbance and change in the yep. market but what you know my advice would be is to prepare and understand what these implications are going to be so how can you simplify it for, for people listening here, our engineers, our suppliers, whatever they are? Yeah, so for example, there are a lot of tools here. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <one>. Yeah. <laughs> Colin being one. Bit rude, um, yeah. 
No, there's a, there, there's a lot of tools and services available for, for businesses who want to explore what these potential implications can be. Now, whether that might be an implication in terms of the customs procedures that are going to be needed, because at the moment, I'm sure you're all aware, there is free movement you know, between goods and people, traveling whether you're buying in, in Belgium or Italy or France and bringing Wait. them into the UK. Now, going forward, there's going to be a change to that process. Now, that process already exists because... We've been exporting to businesses outside, um, you know, customers and businesses outside of e- EU for a number of years. We do a lot of trade with China, with India, you know, with the BRIC countries, you know, with the US. There's a good, there's good opportunities. So it's about understanding what that process is going to be and how that will affect that business, but not just your business. How it, you know, how it may affect your uh, your supply chain. So if you're exporting, say, to Italy, you know, Colin, then. Absolutely, you've got to understand the process and the procedures to be able to do that. But similarly, if you're importing in, then your supplier will have a different process to go through. So it's what does that look like and, and how do you upskill yourself? You know, th- there's, there's a lot of questions on, on that side. So, so what does it look like and how do I upskill myself? Well, the first thing that you, you know, I would recommend is, is to actually get the facts rather than, you know, and, and any sort of, you know, political rumblings or... or um, don't speak to a politician then. Well, no, but th- 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 there's a lot of news out there, you know, whether it be on social media, whether it be through the press, but actually cut through that and actually understand what that process is. And, and, and the government, to be fair to them, have put a lot of information and a lot of services out there on their website um, that will actually tell you what the implications will potentially be. What is a website? So it's UK gov.com and then forward slash brexit tool oh. within our industry um you know we hear things on the news uh jlr stories and in fact the one of the ones the other day was the airbus where they said sure. it could be obviously there was government intervention there i believe in in making airbus say that to uh, obviously try and get us out of this situation we're in at the moment uh, so we don't end up with no deal. Um, in your opinion, knowing the uh, the laws around the movement of goods, uh, do you think it would be catastrophic for there to be no deal? Or do you think it would be something we'd get over quite quickly? That's an interesting question, Paul. I think from a negotiation... First for Paul. <laughs> Sorry, mate. From a negotiation point of view, you need to leave that on the table. Because, you know, let's just think the EU at the moment, if you took no deal, you know, the option of no deal off the table then they know that the UK has to come up with some deal and it puts all the control from the EU side. I think what it will do is, I mean, do I believe there'll be, you know, no food on the shelves and, you know, we'll be rioting on the streets with our yellow vests? No, I, that's not how we operate in, in, in the UK. We call for debate, we challenge, you know, and we look for the answers. So there is opportunity behind that. So, for example, you know, there's going to be a change to the way that the goods are coming in. And yes, there will be some disturbance in terms of the time frames of how that of how those goods come in, because you may, you know, operate a just in time process, you can pick up the phone or send an email or go on a portal. And within a few hours, within a few days, potentially the goods are at site. That's going to change. And you need to understand and you know, what I would you know, encourage is to work with your supply chains with the different elements that that all impact your business, whether that be the vertical or horizontal you know, um, aspects, and, 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 and have a plan, have a strategy, understand how you're going to do that. And it gives you a perfect opportunity. And, and this is the big thing I would say, guys, around Brexit. Yes, there is going to be, you know, some challenges with it, but change represents opportunity. So, you know, it's, it's a time to take down barriers, not build them. You see, it, it's very interesting, isn't it? Because the, the country is so split, and one, one day you'll hear... Uh, a story from, you know, say, uh, Jürgen Meyer from Siemens about how disruptive it's going to be with bringing importing goods and exporting and supply chains. And then the next you'll listen to, um, well, I was listening to David Davis the other day, uh, the uh, ex-Brexit minister, I believe he was, wasn't he? And he was saying that actually the EU have form in the fact that they literally will wait till the last minute to budge. And it could be March the 29th uh, at 12 o'clock. And they actually have something they call, which is extra time. And they actually have used that on many occasions when they've got into these negotiations and they've stood firm right until the last minute. And he believes that that's what will happen again. But the thing we can't have is ministers actually believing that that won't be the case and buckling and giving concessions away in order to agree a deal um, that's inferior than what we've got. So I think they need to stand firm. Yeah. But I think taking a step back, it's a case of, and speaking to a lot of engineers out there, don't panic, we will adapt. It's as simple as that, you know. 
and we're all big enough and we can we can do that and we've done it m- many many a time before uh, absolutely so colin you know we've been through a number of different challenges as as a country and uh, and as business operators in the past and and we've got through them and there's no reason why we won't get through that and just coming back on your point paul i think it's a really pertinent point because from the very start you know theresa may and and and, and, and all the political teams have said the EU will, 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 will wait for the last minute, mm. you know, to, to be able to do that. So that position hasn't changed. It, uh, you know, my frustration with it is there is political connotations with, with Brexit, absolutely, but there's a large part of business and somehow they seem to be muddled together. And and what I would encourage is, is get the politicians to deal with the political part and let the businesses who deal with this day in, day out lead that. And, and I believe once you've got that deal and we then have the ability as a country to go out and negotiate these deals... It, it, we will be in a good place because you know. Let's not forget, we're Great Britain. You know, we've we've been around a long time. We've you know we're pioneers of international trade. We, we know what we're doing. You know, you've we've got to put faith and have a bit more confidence in ourselves. And I almost feel that you, you you can't talk yourselves up now because then you know you set yourself up for a fall. But we shouldn't do that. But it, you, in your line of business, you're dealing on a day to day basis with people that are importing and exporting. Um, would you say, as a percentage, they're greater in favour of remaining than they were of Brexiting? At this stage now, yes, I believe. I believe that might, you know that would be the case. You know, I couldn't put you put a number on on a figure on that. We won't quote you on it, Sanjay, but yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm just not going to say ninety nine percent or anything like that, Carl. But, but is it quite high? Would you say? Yeah, I would say yeah, and and, and I don't think that's necessarily um, a change in the personal view of that individual or, or, or of that group. I think it's just the way that it's been managed. No one wants to introduce complications when you don't necessarily need them, do they? But some some could say that that's a short term view because in the longer term we've got it's a big world out there. Yeah, I, I know. You know, my my personal view is that view is born out of frustration rather than are we doing the right thing? Is this the best thing for us going forward in the future? It's, we, we've almost got Brexit fatigue. You know, every day you turn the TV on, there's something else about Brexit. Can I come back to, though, in terms of an engineer sitting here at the moment thinking, oh, it's mm. going to be a flipping nightmare. You mentioned the government support on the website. Sorry to sort of curtail what you're saying, because I think we're getting too politicised there almost, if I can use that word. It's no Especially such word. F- is it not? No, I've just oh. looked at it in the dictionary. But carry on. No, you put me wrong. Right we, we know what you mean. So you can go to the government website, get some help there. What about, it's going to cost me money to do that. Can, can you get any government support? Good point, Colin. You can indeed. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be change to the customs procedures, for example, but the government is helping businesses out with that by providing a grant of up to £2,500 for businesses to be able to help retrain um, with their customs procedures. Where do I get it? You go onto the government website, which, oh. uh, which, which link, is which is www.gov.uk. So if you're an importer, uh, sorry, it's just just relating to exports, obviously. Exporters and importers. Anywhere where there's a where where there's a inward and outward movement of goods, there's going to be a procedures with their customs. So that is where you know, and and there's a lot of good things out there that the government is trying to do, um, and and businesses, and you know whether there be logistics, whether there be you know in the advisory side, whether there be you know people like myself trying to get in there and, and support those businesses. There's a lot of help and support out there, but unfortunately, as we said. It has been sort of, um, you know, lost in translation or buried, you know, at the bottom because there's a, there's a lot more newsworthy things or you know, um, shall we say, articles that will get a lot more likes and clicks um, and and shares on social media yeah, now. Stuff that MTD do, I think. Is that yeah, right? it's the sensationalized side of it, you know. Oh, whereas not about sensationalized. That's a bit. You know, I, I encourage a balanced view. Let's be balanced and understand. What are the cons? What are the pros? And how you mitigate them? And in you know, it's 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 a real good point because there is a lot of help for you know for, for businesses that are trading out there, financial help as well as um, you know technical and practical help. And on another side, if you know if the if the business is then looking at new markets as part of you know any frustration and challenge they have with the Brexit, because as again there is going to be opportunities out there you know, through the Department of International Trade, you know, UK Export Finance. There's financial support for businesses to go and capitalise on those markets. So, but as a p- bit of a plug for, well, Valab Associates, all these places you're mentioning, if someone has got any questions or wants to m- move into a into Europe post-Brexit or they want to export to, I don't know, Mexico, protect themselves and make loads of widgets and they're going to spend a fortune, they want to make sure they get paid and all things like that and handle documents, contact yourself and you can talk them through the, all these minefields that I've got no idea 
Absolutely, it's you know it, where I would help is 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 in a number of different ways, but the key ways you know I, I would say is sort of demonstrating and in, in you know what the art of the possible is for that business. What's the possible? Yeah, what the art of the possible is, and you know a, a real sort of catchphrase in, in in my world, which I am going to trademark because you know it's a great one is is what I try and do is demystify the dark art of trade because. It can be complex when We've it doesn't need to be. We've already got that one, Sanjay. Too late, mate. No, it's, I've, I've I've already registered it. Sorry. Um, so you know, there's the, 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 you know, there's a lot out there, and what I, what I'm trying to do is make it simple. So whether that be managing and raising finance, um, and as we said, there's a lot out there. How does an engineer? How does a business find all of this information? Because there's a lot, and this is why people like me exist is to almost be a conduit to that and and channel that information and and make sure it's relevant. And, we, and with your expertise, we hear so much about the supply chain um, It's in the automotive industry, parts and aerospace coming from here, going overseas, coming back again, you know, as the assembly goes together. Mm -hmm. um, and you deal with importers and exporters on you know, within your business. Some say this split, call it, is going to be, if there is one, more damaging for Europe than it is going to be for us. And some say it's going to be more damaging for us than it is going to be for them. Agreed there's going to be pain on both sides. But with the people that you deal with and the companies that you know, um, the quantities of import, ex imports and exports that you look at, who will be hit the worst, do you think? God, you're throwing <laughs> some <laughs> tough, tough ones at Sanjay, aren't you? Because people are going to quote him on this. You said Sanjay. Paul, I wish I could give you a sensible answer, answer to that. All I, all I will say on that point is this. There is a vested interest uh, within Europe for, for Brexit and, and post-Brexit not to work. Because if it then works, what does that say about the European Union? Yeah. yeah. You know, it, what, what this does do is give us control around our destiny. And it, and it is going to cause some problems, you know, for these businesses that have an import and export cycle. Because unfortunately, we don't necessarily have the raw materials in the UK to be able to produce steel or iron or, you know, in the quantities that we will need. But what we have is the expertise, the knowledge and the experience to make that happen. So, you know, wh where there's a great opportunity for, for us as, you know, as a business is to actually export our skills and expertise because people want them. So we'll be trading in a different way, I believe, mm -hmm. you know, so there'll be a lot, of, you know, we're seen as a safe haven. As, as, as the UK, you know, we're a center of excellence, of, of knowledge, you know, people will be coming to us to understand our skills, uh, you know, and, and, and how we can actually then export them. So I think there'll be, you know, a, a slight, you know, change in terms of the mix of, of that business, but it's down to us to, you know, make it successful. It's down to us to make it as painless as possible from yeah. that side. We are an innovative uh, country um, and uh, we're an innovative business. And like you sound, yours is as well, Sanjay. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. We'll um, publicise your website details on uh, the links uh, on our channels so people can visit you and uh, so find out more. In simple terms, don't panic about Brexit, import and export speak to you. Is that, Absolutely. Is that, is that nice and simple? Love yeah. it. Well done. Glad you came. Cheers, Colin. Thanks, Sanjay. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, Carl.